friends. Welcome back. My name is Ramon. How are you today? So affordable, accessible, and offering good protection. That is literally everything that Bondi Sands is promising us with their daily moisturizing face SPF 50 plus fragrance free. Recently, I saw quite a few of my Twitter creator friends talking about the sunscreen, specifically Alicia Lardy, as well as Latif Saka, which you know from my channel. And obviously because people that I really respect were talking about this product and really raving about it, my interest was quite piqued. And did I mention this was only $7 pound, seven pound. But before I get into talking about the sunscreen, I'm gonna ask that you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And down below in the comments, have you tried this? What are your thoughts? Are you gonna get your hands on it? Sound off. Also down below, let me know, would you wanna see more from Bondi Sands? Looking into the brand a little bit more, they do a lot of sun-based products, mainly self-tanner, but they do have a lot of different sunscreen products. This is their face sunscreen. Latisse specifically actually really likes their body sunscreen to use on the face, but they also have sunscreen sprays, lip balms. They got a whole bunch of stuff. If you wanna see more from Bondi Bondi Sands, let me know. Looking a little bit more at the brand, Bondi Sands is an Australian brand and they actually tend to focus a little bit more on self-tan based products. But that being said, they also do have a lot of sun care products. They focus a lot more on tanning and safely tanning basically. What we're really looking at is a moisturizing, lightweight, invisible finish, water resistant sunscreen is gonna give you broad spectrum protection. How I test these chemical sunscreens, I do a 6F rubric and that stands for feel, finish, filters, formulation, foundation wear, and fragrance. I've been using this product now for a few weeks. So the opinion I have on it is based off all that experience. On top of that, on screen, what I'll show is application of approximately a quarter teaspoon to cover my face, my ears, and my neck. I work that in, let it set in for at least five minutes, and then I'll go on top of it with makeup. And then an additional part of the chemical sunscreen testing is that I reapply the sunscreen on top of makeup since most chemical sunscreens work really nice on top of makeup. So with all that being said, let's start talking about the sunscreen. And first F is gonna be the feel of it. So what really caught me off guard about this product was that it's just a very lightweight texture. It comes out and it looks like a standard sunscreen, but the minute I start to work it in, it feels really, really lightweight. The minute I start to rub it in, it's really, really lightweight gel cream lotion texture, and it works in very quickly. You can see it's already almost completely sunk in. Contradictory wise, it's still very emollient texture to it. And you can see this half is rubbed in. This is still the sunscreen. I spread it across a few swipes in, and it's pretty much already invisible. And that leads me to the next F, which is the finish of it. It is a moisturizing sunscreen. It has a lot of emolliency to it. The finish of it is radiant. I don't know if you can see here in the studio lights, there's a good amount of shine there. There's a good amount of radiance, dew, suppleness, juiciness. As the title of the sunscreen mentions, it's a moisturizing sunscreen. So as an oily skin individual, I actually just use this in place of a moisturizer as a two-in-one moisturizer sunscreen combo. If you have more dry skin, try it like this, but honestly, I don't see the issue with using a moisturizer underneath it. While it is richly moisturizing, I do feel like this does set into the skin nicely and very quickly. It's just, it leaves your skin very, very nourished. It leaves a lot of emolliency on the skin. And that's what in turn translates to that shine that it leaves. And that being said, after you apply it, that feeling does stay on your hands and usually when I do the application footage for this, I'll apply the sunscreen and then I'll play on my phone while it's setting in. Whatever sunscreen's left on my hands at emolliency just transfers onto my phone screen and my phone ends up really greasy. On top of that, when I play around my ears and in my ears, my ears just stay shiny, they stay greasy. I'll go and scratch my ears and they just feel like oil slick. So do with that what you will. But the next F is going to be filters. And the tea with this is that this actually uses FDA approved filters. You have homosalate, octosalate, octocrylene, and avobenzone. And those are gonna encompass the entirety of the UV spectrum, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene covering UVB, octocrylene getting into UVA2, and then avobenzone covers the full wavelengths of the UVA part of the spectrum. I love that avobenzone octocrylene combo. That's really gonna stabilize the avobenzone, giving you this really nice fortified photostable UVA protection. And the octocrylene in turn functions with the water resistance of the sunscreen as well. And on the back of the sunscreen packaging itself, it does showcase that it does cover the UVB spectrum as well as the UVA spectrum. It rates it as a three star, AKA good which I means to me that was good. But then besides that, the next step is formulation. Real talk, this formulation is very straight to the point. Besides the UV filter, you don't got a lot of fanciness in this formulation. Primarily what they focus on is moisturization. Looking at the ingredients list, beeswax is like top of the ingredients list. You also have aloe, which aids in the moisturization, but also in some anti-inflammatory properties. You also have a saccharide isomerate, which is just another humectant ingredient. And then you have tocopherol acetate, which they're claiming giving some antioxidant properties, but also really aiding in moisturization. Something I noted that was very interesting, and I think 
it just plays to the brand itself is that this claims it's self tan friendly. I don't self tan. Bondi Sand specifically does have a lot of self tan products though. So I think that's just the brand's way of saying this plays well with all the other brand's products. This is also alcohol free. There's no alcohol in this formulation. This does not sting around the eye area. It does not easily get into my eyes and burn my eyes as a result of that either. You guys ask that all the time. One thing that was really interesting though, and I've never seen this before, this claims to be water resistant for up to four hours. I've never seen anything above 80 minutes. That's a standard that I'm used to. So four hours, that's very interesting. That being said, although it is water resistant, I don't find this is very difficult to wash off. So note that. Next up is going to be foundation wear. And the brand itself does say that this does prep the skin nicely for makeup. And I will stand behind that. This is just a very nicely moisturizing sunscreen. And moisturizing textures like this do prep the skin nicely for makeup. Because I feel like this does really set down into the skin, I feel like once you get rid of some of the extra emolency, I tend to blot a little bit after I let it set down. Makeup applies beautifully on top of this. I had no issue with weird texture, weird appearance, pores or anything. The makeup looked seamless, honestly. The footage you're gonna see on screen showcases after about six to seven hours of wear on this. And I found that I wasn't actually very greasy at all. I wasn't overtly shiny. So I'm blotting took care of that. As I mentioned, I reapplied this on top of the makeup itself. And again, this is a very emollient sunscreen. So after I reapplied for a while, I was very, very, very shiny. Even after blotting, I was still very radiant. So I had to go in and reset my face with powder, go on with a little bit of powder foundation. But after retouching, here I am. This is what I look like. I think it looks really, really good. I find this preps really nicely for makeup. In terms of reapplication, I might want to use a cushion puff instead of a dry beauty blender, but, but I think overall the reapplication was fairly successful. And last up is going to be fragrance. This is actually fragrance and essential oil free, but this smells like sunscreen. This just has a very overtly like sunscreen or at the beach smell to it, which I don't necessarily love. I don't hate it. I don't despise it. I can get past a lot of weird sunscreen skincare smells, but quite frankly, I would much prefer actual fragrance to this. I would prefer it to smell fragranced, fruity, floral, I don't care, botanical. And with that, my final thoughts on the Bondi Sands Daily Moisturizing Face SPF 50 Plus Broad Spectrum Sunscreen. Black Girl Sunscreen dupe. This gives me so much Black Girl Sunscreen tease to it and the texture and the feel and the wear, even the filters and all that stuff. It is a sunscreen that's very to the point. It's very, very moisturizing. It's very emollient. This is just a couple dollars, couple pounds cheaper. Being based in the UK, this is very readily accessible but this actually isn't going to be impossible to get if you're in the US and other international locations. I will have linked below a bunch of different sites like Look Fantastic and Feel Unique. I specifically got this off of Beauty Bay for literally seven pound. Shipping was two pounds, so within 10 pounds, I got this in a day and a half. 75 mil, AKA 2.53 fluid ounces of this. And again, this is designated for the face. The body one that Latif likes is I think double the quantity of this and I don't know the price, but I'll have it in the description box. Again, you get a lot of product for not a lot of money. This is great protection. It's very moisturizing. So this is to me designated more for normal to dry skin, but can oily skin types use this? For sure, 100%. I had no issue. It didn't clog my pores. I didn't get any excess breakouts because of this. This is 100% Ramon recommended. And with that, that is my review of the Bondi Sands Daily Moisturizing Face SPF 50 Plus. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and down below in the comments. Again, have you tried this? Have you tried the other versions or other products from Bondi Sands? Or would you like me to do a review on more of the brand's products? Sound off down below. And down below as well in the description box, I did include a link to my newly established Patreon account. I get so many sunscreen and skincare requests, but since I pretty much just fund all of my reviews with my own money, I decided to open this account to accept very, very small donations, only if you are willing and able to, to be able to fund all the reviews that I will hopefully be able to do in 2021. So check that out as well. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.